Yeah. Are we good now? Are we in focus? Are we in frame? Yeah. Everything like it? Yeah. 15. Episode 15. The motherfucking quinceanera episode that I prematurely <laughs> tried to name the last episode is finally here. Episode 15 of The Kickback. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, once again, I am your host, Jesus Christ. If you are only listening to this on Dash Radio, remember, we do have a visual component that you can find on sneakerinc.com and also youtube.com forward slash sneakerinc. To my right, as per usual, I got my boy Dano. He's rocking the high socks with the gold supreme up tempos tonight to match his always illustrious gold chain. What up? Yeah. That's all you got with that? I, what I can't up? give what it to up? you any better than that. <laughs> I didn't ask for it any better. Thank you, bro. <laughs> That's all I need. You're absolutely right. On the far end, Mr. John Colombo, always with the gold chain as well, with the medallion, sunglasses at night. I made sure that he went back and grabbed those because it wouldn't be right if we did a kickback without John with the sunglasses. Please put your hands together for Mr. John Colombo. Woo! And if you, can, if you can hear that in the background, it means we have a live, a live studio, studio audience. audience. <laughs> we are making moves! <laughs> See, this is what happens. You know, you move to Playa Vista, you get a beautiful sneaker ink wall behind you, you get live studio audiences. We are making power moves down here, players. Don't fuck with sneaker ink. This is what we do. We don't do this for play. We don't do this for fun. This is real life. We don't have to dance anymore. There you go. Ah! Thank you, studio. Studio audience. <laughs> Thank you, studio. They're, they're out here adding content that we didn't ask for, but you know it's. <laughs> and our guest for this special evening is somebody who I've looked to for many years now. His art is top notch, top level, next level. All these fucking we call these adjectives. Uh the Those are not words. adjectives. What but are they? Levels. Level. Less <laughs> levels to this shit. Unique. New York. Would be an adjective. Unique adjective. New York. Yeah, unique. <laughs> now, this man has been in the game for quite a while now. He has created some of the most extraordinary masks with some of my favorite silhouettes, some of my favorite all-time sneakers. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have him here. Please put your hands together for Mr. Freehand Prophet. Woo! Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Now, yeah. I, I usually start these episodes off and saying, you know, we got a special guest. This is somebody that we really live up to, but like. <laughs> so this is a big fuck you to everyone that's this been is, on here. <laughs> no, this is like, this is a humbling moment for everybody else that's been here. But me personally, I've looked up to your work for many years now and to see how far you have come from taking something that was a project that you just started on your own to really just get your name out there and get your art up there and to really hone in on your craft to see what you're doing now with Nike and Adidas and all these big brands. Like, it is such a, it's an honor to have you here with us, honestly, man. Like, I really, like, I mean that from the heart. It, it, it's felt here too, man. And, and honestly, it wouldn't have gotten to this point without people supporting and, and digging the work like you. Absolutely. So, thank you. Most definitely, man. For the people who may not have, uh, you know, the knowledge of who you are, what your background is, please tell the viewers and the listeners a little bit about sure. yourself. So, uh, my name is Gary Lockwood, better known as Freehand Profit, and since 2010, I've been chopping up highly coveted sneakers and making one of a kind masks out of them. <laughs> making a lot of people like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's cringy. Yeah, yeah, it's cringeworthy for sure. <laughs> and I, I can't lie, there are some pairs that make me cringe when I'm cutting them up. It's of course. The, uh, first pair of Jordan 5s I cut up were the Ben 5s, and that's mm. kind of going from zero to 60 all of a sudden. Yeah. So I actually told, when uh, the homie approached me, he's like, yo, I want you to chop my Ben 5s. I was like, nah, I can't do that, I can't uh -huh. do that. But I did, and uh, one thing I learned from that was the better materials, the better the masks. So it, make, it softens the blow a little bit, but. <laughs> and it's not your pairs that you're cutting up either, so. Not always, sometimes it is, um, oh, but really? a lot of the work is, is from collectors, and so mm -hmm. they'll choose the pair for me to reimagine and remix. Right, of course. Now, what, how many pairs does it usually take for you to create a mask? And I'm sure there's different levels and, there, you know. Yeah, it's the, the, the levels episode. <laughs> 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 Definitely. So I, I like to say that it only takes one pair. Okay. Um, that's where I started from, and I kind of stuck to that rule for, for a long time. Um, but, you know, different shoes require different uh, approaches. Right. Um, and so, like, when I worked with the NMDs, I was like, well, I want to do something like a ski mask. There's not a lot of structure to the shoe, so how would I translate that to a mask? Well, 
it also means that the solar red NMD mass took three pairs. So there's a little bit of uh, which we actually have right behind you here on Damn. our beautiful screen. That is a hell of a mask. That is, because that, the, the material of that shoe, it, it probably is what took three different shoes, or three different pairs to do it. Right, right? because it, it's really just a very simplified structure to mm. the shoe. And uh, actually, the interesting thing about the Solar Red is that's the only mask that I plan on keeping for myself. Really? Out of the 165 plus that I've done so far, uh, they've all, all sold or are up for sale, right. but that one was like, nah, that, that's me right there. Yeah, that's most me. definitely. So that was cool. Was it the use of the NMD or was it the red or was it the style? I, it, the solar red definitely, like that's easily like my color range right there. If it's okay. infrared, bright crimson or solar red, I am on it. Nice. Uh, and <laughs> you know, and it was the first time I'd been wanting to do a ski mask out of uh, shoes for a long time. Um, but it was about finding the right shoes. And cool. I originally thought it was going to be the uh, Free Orbit SB2s, but they're actually a little bit stiffer than you might think. And okay. uh, switch that up, and those are going to be uh, Japanese Oni masks. So, yeah. Oh, Crazy. Yeah. God damn. Man. Crazy. Now, we talked a little bit offline, but I want to you know, bring it back full circle. What is your inspiration behind these masks? Because I know originally you started with you know, gas masks, and that's what mm -hmm. you really got popular yeah. for. Um, but talk a little bit about your inspiration and how you kind of decide what characters to make sure. with each one. Um, and you know, it depends on from project to project. Sometimes the concept comes from what shoe I'm working with. Other times I'll choose a shoe based on the concept. Um, but my biggest inspiration has always been hip hop. Um, you know, I went to uh, Corcoran School of Art and Design in DC and you know, when, when the professors are asking you like, oh, what artists were you inspired by? You know, other visual artists usually name other visual artists' inspirations, sure. but for me, the most influential artists have always been MCs. So I tried to, I can't rap. I am musically not inclined you whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, well, how oh, do you yeah. try and make a oh, career? Oh, yeah, first? I got some basement tapes at home. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants that to hear. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I tried to do was I tried to come up with a way that I could be visually lyrical. And so that's what I try okay. to work that's into crazy. each match. Yeah, I would never even put I that, see that. Like, yeah, I never put those two together, but as you say it, it makes perfect sense. I mean, sense. there's artists that like listen to music and do like live painting and stuff, right. and mm -hmm. that influence, but I've never heard anybody say it like that. Right. Yeah, well, and, and that comes, I always like to say there's that mathematics, the science to it. Like, you can see one of the masks, like uh, this one on the left here, which is made out of some uh, EQTs, and you don't have to know where he is or, or what that mask represents to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But if you know that it's a uh, Quetzalcoatl mass shot at Teotihuacan, you realize that like the, all the dots connect. And, and that's where I like, that, like to say that's where the lyr lyricism lies. Um, but I also say it's, it's like a DJ cutting and scratching a record right. or a producer sampling a classic track and making it a whole new art form. So because it, you're including like parts of the story that the shoe has, exactly, and then mm -hmm. flipping it. Okay, that makes a lot Giving of sense. Giving it your own, yeah. Steve. Yeah, that's right. crazy. What's been right. your favorite mask that you've created? Since ooh, ooh, ooh. It's like that's your favorite ooh. child. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> it definitely changes. Um, again, talking about the Quetzalcoatl mask, that one, because I think it's the closest to what I have in my head for for photo shoots. Oh, okay. Um, I see these, the photos, the photos are so important. It's, it's like, it's part sculpture, it's part uh, photography. Because mm -hmm. um, that's actually why I started making the mess to begin with this. I wanted to make something surreal that I could photograph that wasn't using Photoshop. Right. Uh, one of the few visual artists that I am really inspired by uh, was Sandy Scoglin. Mm -hmm. And she's a photographer who would build these really impressive installations, say it'd be mm -hmm. all gray room with these radioactive green cats. Yeah, the cats. Yes. So. Yeah. That was kind of like my inspiration. Like I have a lot of training in Photoshop, but I was like, let me, I want to bring this into the real world. make it, yeah, actually and, tangible. Right, right. So, you know, when I shot the, the, the Yeezy 2 mask, that mm -hmm. was uh, the Egyptian god Horus. I couldn't make it to Egypt for that photo shoot. So, <laughs> so we, we, yeah. <laughs> we made it work and we, we you know, superimposed it with some, uh, but going to the, going to the pyramids at Teotihuacan in person it, it was life changing yeah life -changing. so that that's your favorite one if you yeah yeah actually in that shot that you see right there mm -hmm. um i spent probably a good half hour meditating at the top of that pyramid and it looks directly at the pyramid of the sun so now when i'm like 
I'm working and I take my little break to, to meditate and refocus, I close my eyes and that's, that's what I see. Visualize. Yeah, yeah, and that, yeah. That's, some, that's powerful. That's, that's, powerful. that's, that's fucking incredible, man. Thanks. It's funny to hear you talk about like bringing the Photoshop into the real world because there's that artist Cole. Cole mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. we He's actually, doing a lot of this stuff. that yep. Mexico City trip, he was uh, the other featured artist. We uh, teamed up and did some events for Adidas Dope. while we were out there. Because right. some people might think that this is the same thing, but no, this is real. Right, right. These are these right. are shoes yeah. that have been deconstructed and reconstructed into yeah. these fucking art forms, man. It's it's fucking incredible. We talked about it a little bit offline, but like I was saying before, my favorite one is seeing you bring the Master Chief helmet to yes, life with Astro with the King's Gaming. Crown, that was fucking LeBron. What was it, LeBron Elevens? I think it was. Yeah, LeBron, LeBron Eleven Levin. King's Crown. Man, these are so crazy. I forget crazy. some of them too. It's just that like, diamond one. They with the come skull back teeth? around like this. I'm just like, damn. The, 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 the diamond the Tiffany skull. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that that, that is absolutely one of my favorites. I told you that's top three for me. Yes. The fucking the, with the teeth is the three heel, lab like, fives elephants? with the tusks. Yeah. And okay, so that that's got some story to it. So that was the hundredth piece. And oh, okay. I, I knew I had to do something special. And it's actually uh, based on a design I did from a series called the Guerrilla Art Squadron uh -huh. um, that came out of that same Mass 365 project that okay. the sneaker mask came out of. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this, this elephant mask. And uh, we drove up to Oregon and shot it with an elephant at a sanctuary. And it was just a trip. <laughs> but OK, so you, know, you mentioned those tusks, right? <laughs> That, that's the light work. Check this. So the canisters that are on the tusks are actually hollowed out. Okay. And in one canister, there's an SD card with the photos of the 99 mass that came before it. And in the other side, there's a poem I wrote about the uh, history of elephants through human history. Uh -huh. And uh, three seeds. You can imagine what plant they might be from. Hmm. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's wow. crazy, man. See, I love the depth and the storytelling. That's, that's for me, that's paramount. Yeah, Absolutely. and you're going that distance for these photos. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing, too. It's, like to, to, it's one thing to create the art, but to care about how it's presented Absolutely. is that's, that's an art craft. That's yeah. an art form in itself. So to go to these links and, and these locations and really put in all that work, like that's something I can personally appreciate a mm. lot you know, because I've gone... To cook to some lengths for real to right. get a shot, and but that's, that's that's part of it, right? Like that's the adventure. If, if we're making the most out of our lives and, and chasing our passions, like let's mix them in and do it up. Let's not half-ass it and see it through, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See well, it through. and with the photos, it's so important because most people don't see the mass in person. Most people right. see the photos. Absolutely. Right. So presentation, like you said, it, it's key, and mm -hmm. uh, like. Trying to still, trying to tell a story visually, so and telling a story in a photo is different than telling a story in a video. It is. 100%. You have one frame. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You have one frame. Although, well, as a photographer, I admit I publish way more than I probably should at <laughs> each set. It's like <laughs> 12, 15 photos. Most cats are like, let me get like five or six. I'm like, ah, I don't do it justice. You got to have the floating heads. You got to have the model shots. You need the radioactive this cats. Side. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. What has been the most difficult silhouette to work with? Mm. Fives aren't easy. Really? Yeah. Uh, which is kind of funny because it was probably my favorite Jordan before I started cutting them up. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and it changed your whole thought process on it that. It did. Huh? They're, still, they're still up there. When I see a pair intact, I'm like, mm. yeah. That, what, that's like these? Fly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that. You, every that. episode, you seem to wear the pair that we just decided to go ham on. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's been, what, four episodes now? I think they've all been Jordans, though. No, he wore Yeezys uh, oh, right. two they episodes Yeezys, ago. Yeah. yeah, for the first time, we went in on you. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, there's him <laughs> dropping up your true blue. I got torn up on that. <laughs> Damn. So, the, and what's been your favorite silhouette to work with? Uh, probably still my favorite two shoes are Air Max 90s and Jordan 3s. Okay. Those two, are, it seems like no matter how many times I cut them up, I find a new way to like reimagine those yeah. shapes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm really just a big fan of anything Tinker's design because, I mean, for the obvious reasons. Of course. Remixing them in different ways, man, like it's the lines that he has in his designs, it, it it's just like sampling a classic. You know, it's, it's perfection you, and in you shoe form. You can't recreate that either. Mm -hmm. Like the, 
it, a lot of that work was the connection that he had with Michael Jordan himself and right. really bringing like a lot of his passions to life in these shoes and incorporating the way that he played in the game yes. and all that into doing it. Like that was really like they had some type of like it was synergy magic. that you yeah, can't. That connection yeah. brought in the like luxury materials. Yeah, most stuff. definitely you can't recreate that. It's mm -hmm. incredible. Uh, so Next level. when you got started, you know, what was your thought process behind the 365 project? Why did you decide to like just go in the way that you did? Sure. Well, it actually was inspired by an artist named Noah Scalin. Mm -hmm. And every day for a year he did, uh, he made skulls. So okay. he did a skull a day uh, project. And from my years at the Corcoran, there were projects and assignments that we had like that, like create 88 works in two weeks. And it's about that creative push. Mm -hmm. um, when I saw the Skull Day project, I kind of, I was in a little bit of a stagnant spot. I was doing a lot of work for, you know, friends that were releasing albums, doing album covers, photo shoots, and I was right. working at a print shop. So I was designing t-shirts for, you know, everybody who wanted a t-shirt brand. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't putting that energy into my own projects. And I wasn't right. chasing my own vision. And I knew I had to Look, if, if you want to be something, start doing that every day. Mm -hmm. And so it, was, it wasn't enough that I was good at art. Right. To be an artist, you're in it every day. Like, at least thinking about it. Absolutely. And when you push yourself to do more than think and act on it every day, it opens up new, totally new doors. I never sure. would have thought I would have been making masks out of sneakers. Like, right. I, w I was a 2D artist. I, I did not think I had a, a knack for sculpture, mm -hmm. and that project allowed me to get a little loose and play with it a bit and push my boundaries beyond what I could have expected, for Absolutely. real. Absolutely. So what was the, the mask that really, like, kind of popped off your, your career, so to speak, and really made you feel like, damn, like, this is what I, I do now? The, you know, the f very first pair of Jordans I chopped mm -hmm. was uh, the Laker... Uh, Jordan ones. Laker ones. I was yeah. talking to act about those earlier, and uh, it was it got picked up by the sneaker blogs, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, I, I got some people who understand because I had a, I felt like I had a disconnect. I, I wasn't on the forums. It was you know just everybody I knew was in the kicks, and like right. we all had our own flavor. We weren't you know we didn't have a idea of where where the hype was at. You know mm -hmm. it was like this cat is all about his J's. You know and like. So and so might be only Adidas, and, and just kind of getting that taste of all these different styles and, right. and all that. So, dude, it's crazy to. <clears throat> these are things that like we really like covet and mm -hmm. put in cases and straight up. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, <laughs> we're concerned with the, the temperature and the yeah, elements yeah. around them. <laughs> yeah. And, like, yeah. And you just take a blade to it, man. I watched you do it today, and it kind of like. Like I said, I was at a loss for words a few times. We were talking and I would just... It's unsettling. Zone the fuck out and like, look oh. at what you were doing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. right now, for, for the listeners, we have a box in front of us that is normally filled with uh, beautiful, uh, intact COVID sneakers intact. Yeah. that yeah. are now filled with... Scraps. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Materials. Materials for next of, project. of grails, too. Like, grails. that's not even, you know, it's not yeah. like you just put some GR stuff in there and she cut up. Like, this no, is stuff this that is, people no, really zebra like. zebra carcass. It, it's a zebra, zebra carcass. Yeah. Yeah. All up in that box. <laughs> There's some fours yeah. with pony so, hands yeah, on yeah, 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 like it. We got two zebras and a pony yeah. in that yeah. box. Right <laughs> people are yeah. calling us. <laughs> that's insane. So now that we've, you know, we've kind of ventured past your start, how did these bigger collaborations come about? Because, you know, you've been in the game for a minute. You've done things a little bit like under the radar. People have picked up on it. But now you're doing installations for Nike and things like that. Like, how did, did one, did you ever see this becoming like a reality for you? And two, how did this actually come into, you know, fruition? So to answer that first question is I definitely saw it. I just wasn't sure when it was going to happen. Okay. So the very first mask that I made, first sneaker mask during Mask 365, was a pair of SB Blazers. Mm -hmm. And what I saw it as, a, like, this is a pitch for an ad concept. This is, this is a marketing campaign right. um, beyond what I was doing with it in the fine art concepts. Um, but what was, the other, what was the second question? The there? second question was, how did the collaboration oh, did with Nike really come to fruition? 
Um, Anadies. You know, yeah. Anadies, I think, yeah. I think uh, a lot of it boils down to being on their radar for a while, and okay. eventually they decided, like, now's the time. Mm -hmm. um, I have, not that I can think of, I don't think I've ever really reached out to the brands in that sense, right. at least without any success that it came into a project. For me, right. they came to me usually through uh, ad agencies and, and different creative okay. agencies like that. And uh, So it's been very organic the whole time. Yeah, yeah really. organic is, is key. I always mm -hmm. say like, you know, I know where I want to go, right. but I have to accept that that may not be tomorrow. There's some groundwork that's got to be laid and, yeah. and build like that. So, um, I, look, every time, every time <laughs> a new project like that comes in, I'm thinking, okay, what was the catalyst? What was the thing to right. push them over the edge and be like, that yeah, you want to know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, so I could do more of you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Hone that <Straight> craft. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, some of it's, you know, putting yourself out there. And, you know, I did tour uh, conventions for, like, 18 months mm -hmm. and uh, did Designer Con last year out here in Pasadena and did an interview with Tested.com, and, and that got it out there. So it's just talking uh, to folks and, and, yeah. and explaining the work and that doing what we're doing right now. Straight up, just right? Like, <laughs> they just wake up one morning and there's this. Uh, <laughs> Nike would like to work with you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's. Uh, I always try to hold the excitement until the check go back clears. to bed that day. Yeah, and... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish. Uh, no, normally it's when, when I get an email like that, it's like I'm going double speed in the studio today because I got to uh -huh. make sure my plate's clear uh -huh. to squeeze in this giant brand project that I'll probably have half as much time as I'd like to, right. to complete it. But so how long did this most recent Nike project take you and how many <laughs> shoes were included in it? So uh, I normally spend a few weeks on each mask. Even okay. something like the elephant took me over a year. Oh, shit. Um, Damn. I mean, it's very intricate. How many, yeah. actually, just to cut you off real quick, how many... Uh, fives did you use for that one? That was two pairs and a Jordan sweatshirt for two the ears. Pairs? Oh shit, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. It looks like so much more material. Yeah. yeah. It, the ears are what trick you because it, then it stretches out all that I've space. Been right. You've been tricked. <laughs> okay, cool. Bamboozled. Good <laughs> <Unwinked. laughs> All right, back to the story. I apologize. Yeah, uh, which story was that? The, uh, the most recent oh, Nike right. with the, the Air Nike Force project. One. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was it was tight because I was just finishing up uh, two masks for Adidas for a show out in Sydney that we did for for an EQT launch, uh, and then Nike hit me up for the Air Force Ones, and it was like, well, that's August. Like, don't let anything else in the door. Uh huh. Um, and it was it was eight pieces, four masks, four flight helmets, and uh, the masks were made in eight days and all shot on the ninth day. A little out of order, actually the, the last colorway didn't arrive until uh, the afternoon before I was scheduled to fly out to, for the setup. That's so funny. I had less than 24 hours oh to uh, make a flight to, helmet uh -huh. with an oxygen mask. So it's like, it's like a double up, really. What the fuck? And then, and then ship it out. Can we scroll down to the next shot? Yeah, because you can... You see all of them for oh, the viewers. Yeah. We're actually, or excuse me, for the listeners. We're actually looking at these masks right now, and they can and see them at freehandprofit.com. That's what we're looking perfect. at there right you now. Go. Perfect. This is, in so how many um, special field Air Force Ones did you use for each one of these masks? They sent me more material than I've ever been sent for projects. <laughs> <laughs> That's and a good problem. It man. was. It was, it was. At first, it was a little overwhelming, but <laughs> it really allowed me to work faster right. because I didn't have to take into consideration what if I want to use this part later on somewhere else. Right, right. Making sure each you piece. Just go ham. You were right. just yeah. It was just <laughs> slice, 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 and I just sit there. Like looking from behind and stuff exactly. flying, around, flying around. Exactly. Man. Did you, uh, do you have any uh, leftover ten and a halfs? No. <laughs> No, we had uh, we had a few leftover nine and a halfs that the wife is wearing, and we sent uh, a few pairs out to Houston, and then the, there you uh, go. the rest the are out there. Nice. Great. Yeah. Hey, that was there a go. very good deed. Very good deed. That was probably my favorite. That, with the, it, the fucking joint that flips up yeah. in the yeah. front. Yeah. <laughs> that one I, I was really happy with because it's the it's really the first one like it. Like uh -huh. never done anything like that one before. So 
Yeah, you can see that you had a ton of these because of all the your repetition. Right. Yeah. Right. And that allowed for that, which looks right. so good. It's a it's a powerful tool when I can be able to repeat like that, yeah. and especially when you see the 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 eighth one, which is the orange quartz. You might be able to scroll down and check that one out. Keep going. <sighs> Keep going. Jesus, man. Mo, mo, a little bit mo. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost sad. So he's even these. still, wait. I know, right? There it's we like go. He's got so many. So Ooh, this orange quartz fuck. joint, was, this is the one that I had basically made and shot in less than 24 hours, which is like a new feat for me. Like that is You broke your own record, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like nothing about, at this point, nothing about this looks like a shoe. Like, yeah. When we reach you. this level of it, you, you can see you have taken it to fish. yeah you've really taken it to like a whole Yo, new place. Yo, that's so there it is on display. Ill, yeah. man. When did you learn how this to braid? It looks like my hair coming down the What's side. When did you learn how to braid? Like that? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Pro probably middle school Fall making friendship career. bracelets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Setting up it's, some options. It's a trip though, because <laughs> when I started it was only the three strand, then it went to four strand, and then every now and then I get a little ballsy and do the six strand, but. <laughs> This Yo, mask thing dope. don't work and out. For, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> do some hair. Maybe for make the, a mask the, and do hair out the same studio. Go. Hey, <laughs> she sell dope, do hair, and babysit out the All same. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, for you only have a, a limited amount of time to do this one, and this colorway specifically, it came out fucking incredible, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, that this shit is, is so unbelievable. Cool. And obviously, this is your craft now. Like, this, you've, you've honed it in. You know what to do and how to eliminate yeah. the most, you know, uh, what is the this time colorway? and all of this. Orange quartz. See, they keep fucking me up with... This. It's like the same... It's, it's, it has the Arctic orange. Arctic orange. Yeah. It's the same yeah. color yeah. it is on the Don C's pretty much, yeah. right? Yeah, it looks yeah. very similar. Yeah. And, um, and I should have thought of that when they told me, oh, the last colorway is orange quartz, because we didn't see it. We opened the box. Mm. That looked like pink it's to pink me. to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Hell was yeah. it their idea to do the flight helmets? Yeah, it was... Um, it was, they came to me and they're like, we're going to do a whole, we want to do like flight helmets and masks. I was like, all right, gotcha, we're going to mix like it, it up a really bit. Well. Totally. And, and actually, these weren't, they're the first flight helmets to release, but they're not the flight, first flight helmet that I started. Okay. There's a Supreme 5 flight helmet that I'm making for uh, Roughneck. Which colorway? Camos. Mm. Sick. All right. So, so did, uh, yeah. for the rest of the I have this kind of question yeah. in regards to the all the masks as a whole, but this especially, because this is from a, you know, for a brand. The non-sneaker related pieces that mm -hmm. you use to kind of intertwine and help sculpt the mask. Mm -hmm. So here we're talking about the top of the helmet and the, the little guard in front. Right. So stuff like that, is that stuff that you have to source out? Yeah, so, you know, I uh, kind of have a collection of different gas masks and get that the I Nike find. Nike logo on it? Oh, that's all painted, stenciled, stenciled, all that. And you did that. Too. I did that. And yeah. actually, it was, it was done in another color because, like I said, I thought it was going to be coming in orange with a white sole. Mm. So I had a oh, white, white visor pink. lid. <laughs> yeah. I had to strip the paint, sand it down, all yeah. in that 24-hour yeah. 24 24 hour period. period. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And there wow. was no, like, well, I ain't got no choice. Like, get at it. Yeah. So it was, it was a good run. Damn. And then you, how do you ship something like this out? Like, is oh man, <laughs> <laughs> Sh shipping can be a nightmare. The biggest is going through customs. Right. Um, and you never know which country is going to give you the most trouble mm -hmm. shipping artwork. For sure. Because, uh, you know, there's actually, in art history, there's like cases where artists have had to go to court to prove that it's artwork and not, uh, and I'm actually talking about bird in flight, okay. which is uh, a big industrial, it, they thought it was an industrial part. Mm -hmm. and it's a big golden like rod and it, it's not literally a bird in flight, but it's more about that motion. Okay. And I had to go and, and fight and, and wow. stand up and be like, no, this is, this is fine art. If I was a customs agent and that came through, I'd be like, I don't know, this guy looks like trouble. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, let me tell you, because I, 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 I mentioned I was touring uh, the conventions, <laughs> and so I would ship them out at first. And then I was like, I'm going to try to take one in my check bag. <laughs> <laughs> until I talk, until I talked to one of my collectors, and uh, he had his mask at the show. I was like, "Oh yeah, how, how'd you bring it out?" Oh, it was my carry-on. They let you bring a gas mask right? on a plane? Right. <laughs> like you wouldn't even try. think with <laughs> like, I think the canister's <laughs> off when I go though. I'm like, it's gonna look a little less conspicuous. <laughs> only, only been stopped once. No, no, no. It's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all right. I don't have anything crazy planned. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> 
Got stopped once leaving uh, <laughs> leaving <gas> Dulles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that it was a trip. They, what was they, the, What do they have to say when they pulled you to the side? They're like, like, what What exactly do you have in here? And I was like, ah, they're masks made out of sneakers. And it's, it's what? And they're like more confused Come after that right. answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then I pull out the collector cards and you know I show them like, yeah, yeah. So you know you, you like Air Force Ones here. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it's yeah. like had it been your first one, uh huh. <laughs> you would have been sweating. Been a little you don't know yeah. the oh man. <laughs> you don't know what the fuck's was. going on, man. So when you doing this for this is your full time gig now, right? Yes, you pretty yeah. much like spent Past, all of your time. Uh, seven years. What are your thoughts on the the DIY culture that seems to be kind of coming up within the sneaker world now? Like, if you look, uh, YouTube Red just premiered a show last night called Laced Up, which is basically cultivating these young designers and these young artists that want to be uh, footwear designers and Mm -hmm. giving them a platform to kind of, you know, cultivate that and really bring that to life. What do you think about the the DIY culture that has really taken off within the sneaker world within I say maybe the last year or so where it really started to kind of pop off. You know, I, I got to just embrace it. Yeah. Like, because it is uh, so much a part of my own personality. Like, right. the I didn't know how to make masks out of sneakers, mm-hmm. but I set out to figure it out. And, you know, I get that from my pops. Like, he was always making stuff and and uh, just like, ah, nah, nah, look, here's what we do. We're going to wire this and do that. You don't, you don't need to go out and buy that. Uh-huh. You just rig it up. You just rig it up. So, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm all about it. Anything, anything you can do yourself, like, jump in. At the very least, you're going to fail and appreciate someone who can, who can do it better. Because you're going to know. That's a, way, that's a good way to put it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You, you, you try cooking a nice, fancy five-course meal, you're going to burn something. And then the mm-hmm. next time you eat that, you're going to be like, this guy knows how to do it. I appreciate what do he does. It. Yeah, 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 exactly. Damn, that's really dope. Have, have you gotten a chance to check out that YouTube Red show, Dana? No. It looks too much like Project One Way. I, yeah, I watch, yeah, so I watched the first two episodes. The first two episodes were free on YouTube. If you have YouTube Red and you can continue the series. And it definitely had like a Project Runway, Ink the, Masters I just saw a vibe. promo for it. Like, I was like, I saw like two sneakers in that whole promo. Uh-huh. It was all like It was all about the celebrity, drama, really. Like people like, falling over right. and like <laughs> the guest judges. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah, not, it, like, it, it, it has should be that, about the real deal. It's like real world meets Ink Masters meets Project Runway. And I appreciate what they're trying to do for the culture. I just feel personally like they really just put too much emphasis on, like you said, the drama, the guest Mm -hmm. judges, the celebrities and all that. It doesn't really feel like they're really showing the art form like you were speaking of earlier, you know, where it's like you have to go through these motions. You have to figure out how this is done, how to make it work. And it seemed more to me like, yeah, they like they made a spectacle of it. The, The first episode was um, they had to create a shoe for Anthony Anderson where they basically took the shell, shell toe and reimagined it to things that he liked when he was younger, things that he's into now, all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the second episode was they had to take, uh, they had like five different boost uh, Adidas sneakers. And Adidas, so basically Adidas is putting a gang of money in this because at the end the winner gets to make a shoe for James Harden. Oh. So that's really like... They're putting it into that perspective, but they had to recreate one of the boost models that they gave him and make it a heel for Ashley Graham. Uh, and it was her and Macklemore on that episode. And, and I appreciate the art form. I really enjoy what they're trying to do, but it just doesn't seem to me like they're putting enough emphasis on the craft. And it's kind of like, it's a it's, spectacle it, it sounds like maybe it's not for the sneakerheads who are already in love with sneakers, but right. it might bring something to the culture. and and, and I mean, what Pencil is doing with, mm-hmm. with like, how, how long have we had fashion schools and everything like that? So right. it's, it's about time. And, and I, I look forward to seeing not just the person who wins, but all the other cats who are getting that experience and mm-hmm. what they take away from it. Sure. I agree. It may not be like my, my programming, mm-hmm. but it might bring some more people to the community. Yeah, so absolutely. I, I that's that's a great way to do it. what I was going to say. <clears throat> you, you hit it on the head. I mean, this... The show isn't made for the core of sneaker culture. Right. If it was made for just the core of sneaker culture, it it's not talking to that broad of an audience, right? Very so, true. You know, we're a big audience. We're not the whole entire audience, right? Mm-hmm. So we're trying to bring the rest of the culture into a space that mainstream media and everybody else is accepting of it, mm-hmm. and it's digestible. If it was just hardcore sneaker shit, it's not digestible. True. Right. So. How do we take something? I, I can empathize with 
the production side as much as I can with, you know, mm -hmm. the culture side. Absolutely. Right? So yeah. we yeah. want to create something dope, but at the same time, we want everyone to like it and everyone to enjoy it. And it's got to have and sizzle and pizzazz. If it does... Sizzle and pizzazz. pizzazz. Like you got to have <laughs> so some energy. Things get glamorized. Straight up. Yeah, you yeah. know, bells and whistles get added to things. Yeah. And obviously, we're looking at something that has a formula that we're familiar with that clearly has worked time and time again, so they kind of kept that thing. Right. Could they have broke the mold a little bit? Probably. That's, I haven't yeah, watched yeah. it, so I can't yeah, say. Yeah, I haven't yeah. watched it either. It just came out last night. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and these are people that that are friends of ours right. at this point. Yeah. So, yeah. We, you know, we're, we're building with Pencil and, and these people, and I think that everything that they're doing as a footwear academy, the only mm -hmm. true-to-life footwear academy, yeah. is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. People get to go to that school, and they get to go to it for free. Mm. And the reason that they get to go for free is because the brands come in and they spend money to sponsor the school mm -hmm. so that it can continue to live and float and have you mm. know, and and people educate yeah. that have, have long time in the footwear industry. Mm -hmm. And now that they get to work there and they get to teach these kids and show them things for free, yeah. mm -hmm. the only thing is deal. that they're working on real projects. So they're making shoes for, and they're doing designs for brands, big brands, and those brands get to use those designs and put them into production. Mm -hmm. Now those kids don't get paid for it, but they get to go to school for free. Right. And they get all that yeah. experience. And they get that on their take. resume. Right. Yeah. So right. Like, right. It's, it's like the best of an internship in a school Dude, kind of put together. Right. That shit yeah. is next level, especially for something like, I can't stand the, you know, the institution of college and that mm -hmm. whole side mm -hmm. of like Agreed. academia. just kind of drives me crazy. So to see somebody break the system like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and do it in that way is great. And then now that they have, now that they have a show around that school so i'm looking at different angles of it like there's gonna be more looking people at just the show to go. yeah there's a show and there may be elements that you know we uh, that are deeper in the culture aren't you know in love with but at the end of the day if we look at the big picture of it you know that's going to shine a crazy big fucking spotlight yeah, on pencil academy right, right? Yeah, and now right. they're going to have people trying to get all the way in that door they're probably mm -hmm. going to have to move Mm -hmm. Into a bigger, bigger space. space, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna yeah. have to have to get a campus after if they get a couple more seasons. Well, like, see, like that shit is gonna grow crazy. Shit. Like, well, it's gonna make it even more. Like, people right. are gonna see this, and the brands and are gonna want to fuck with them even more. I can make it, shoes too. Yeah, I can do what I just yeah. saw. It's oh, expanding yeah. the community, and and exactly, and it's it is a double edged sword because you got to look at. We've made ourselves a community and a market group that has power. Right. We have a voice. What, we, what we're at the stage of now is making sure that that culture and we main, maintain that voice, just like hip hop had to go through. Mm -hmm. You would not have thought in the 80s that they were going to be having hip hop in McDonald's commercials. Look at us now. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, when are the Mickey D shoes dropping? Probably seven <laughs> years, 10 years? Five, 630? And when you, make, four, <laughs> when, four, yeah. when you making a Ronald McDonald mask? That's uh, an even better question, you feel me? With the golden arches for eyebrows, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta think outside the box, player. Yeah. I think if, as long as they, you know, I, who knows where it's gonna go from here, you know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's dope that something like that, that, you know, a media company and, brands are dumping money into creating mm -hmm. shows like this. I think it's kind of dope and it really brings mm -hmm. more to it. Hopefully it stays close enough to the culture right. that it doesn't completely alienate the core audience. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, I, I watched the first two episodes and you know, I'm Did very it alienate, opinionated. Alienate and you? It didn't alienate me. Like there were some funny moments. There was things that I enjoyed because it, ha it does have that reality TV format and mm -hmm. it keeps you engaged. Um, but as like the sneakerhead side of me was like, man, this is not really like true to the culture, but I do understand you put in an even more perspective for me. Like I do understand that it is going to attract more people to that side of it. Cause mm -hmm. I'm not a designer. I'm not a, you know, I don't, I don't draw, I don't do the footwear design things. I don't have that expertise. And somebody that does may be intrigued by this to see like, oh, even if it's on the negative side of like, oh, I can do better than that. And then that fuels them to like want to go mm -hmm. out and try and, you know, do better. At least or, it's the design side, man. Right. Like, yeah. At least they're shining a light on the design side. That's that's a that's an area of footwear culture that doesn't get enough shine. Absolutely. I mean, what the fuck? Would yeah. it, what else? Are we get? America's next top fucking reseller. <laughs> you know what I mean? This, this is at least <laughs> some dope shit. Straight up, no, you're absolutely yeah, right. And you know you just give them like, ideas, right? America's next time we sell it. Well, that also, that's a perfect segue, Trademark though, because it taps into <laughs> my next topic, which was the 10, which was the off-white Nike collaboration. Yeah. So Virgil Abloh did 10 different silhouettes, which to me is still, we talked about this last week, it's so bizarre and just 
insane to me that he got 10, ten. shoes at one, one time. time. Yeah. Never been done before Never. in the history of footwear. Like, that's period. crazy. 10 different pairs? Right. It's Miles, period. Sir. Like, yeah. Paul Rodriguez just got his 10th signature shoe on Nike, and he's been on with Nike how many years now? <laughs> and then Virgil just dumps 10 real quick. Right. I'm going to chop these joints up real fast, put them back together, and y'all going to love it. Yeah. Are you, uh, like instantly <laughs> when you saw it, you must have thought about, thought about a chop. You know, <laughs> like we look at someone like God, that would look so good on my feet, and he was like, "That would look so good in my kitchen." <laughs> yeah, that would look so good on my face. I think I think the interesting thing about it is, is the design is so different. You know, yeah. because the because the design and his style is so different, it would make for for a crazy mask for sure. I, like to be honest, like I love what he's doing but it's not necessarily my style. Mm -hmm. Like I, I like the clean, clean lines yeah, yeah, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and the font may be the biggest thing for me. Like mm -hmm. I'm a tight face nerd, so it's kind of hard oh, to see the basic. Okay. I know exactly what That's he's referencing. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't mind, I mean, but even still, like what I dig is that he's breaking molds and mm -hmm. he's killing it. And so like I'm rooting for him yeah. all the way. Yeah. I think but I'm not chasing the shoes right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, and if the, ni if the 90s had been a different <laughs> colorway, maybe. maybe. See, I like that, the 90s, that's though. my favorite they look one great. out of the, I like yeah, the collection. They look great, but an icy sole in a 90 just yellow It's so going to go yellow fast. mad oh, yeah. quick. Yeah, so I like the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I like them before they touch concrete. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know what's funny to me, though, is like, all right, they did this whole, you know, tour, and I think they're doing the London one right now as we speak, mm -hmm. uh, where they were going and they're doing these panel discussions and they're releasing certain silhouettes and all that. But the, the funniest thing to me was after the Nike event, the day after, he was photographed wearing a pair of Adidas. Really? No yes. way. Yes, he was wearing the Yeezy Wave Runner 700s. Yep. Okay. That now first colorway. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now we're, that's, to me, that's, I don't know. The day the, after, though? The day after, the day that's after. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. in New it's York, like he's still there. It's kind of acceptable because it's Kanye, right? Kind uh, of, because that's his, that they're boys. They're boys, but if you have put this whole The only thing that makes that okay is if Kanye comes out wearing the fucking, which will never, never happen. <laughs> yeah, he ain't wearing never it off-white. Never happen. Nah, Yeezy off jumped over Jumpman. He yeah. ain't doing that. Yeah. Like, no. There's <laughs> no fucking way that But happens. that, to me, is like, okay, if you're putting this whole thing on, like, the reason that he did the whole thing in New York with the installation was because he didn't want to have kids sitting in lawn chairs outside waiting to camp for his shoe. Mm -hmm. He wanted to give them a full experience. And he yeah. did all this with Nike, yeah. and they made this big, yep, there all it is right, right there. Right, hold up, hold up. This, this, is a, this looks posed like a motherfucker, though. This does not look like he got dressed, put those on, and went out for the night. Uh, this looks like he know. gave them a pair and he put them on to get a no, picture. This no, this looks like, yeah, they we're going to give you a pair. Y'all just flick up real quick. We want to put this for, you Regardless, know, we want to hold this for, like, what, like, if you're in contract, I don't, and I don't know if he's in contract with Nike or not, but you not would him. imagine so right, when right, you right. put out 10 shoes yeah. in one fucking time. Why would you even think to do something like this? Now, it's Kanye probably, is your boy. Kanye may have been the mastermind behind that. He's like, oh, you just had that? Well, I'm going to go uh, and just drop in this pair, get a pick real quick. It's Photoshop. Right. Yeah, it's Photoshop. <laughs> say it's Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I think then the blogs picked he up the guy, too. The like, for that. There's no that's what question. I wonder if, yeah, if they had a conversation of, like, what, are you, what the fuck are you doing? Because <laughs> that's not cool, man. We just I mean, spent so much money like, on this. Like, yeah. The shoes already are in release, but that is... 100% breach of contract. No fucking that, way it's not. Right. Well, you, said, you don't know what contract they have. It's That's so true. weird. But you got to think, though. Gotta you would, be. Like, you yeah. would think. Got to be. There's no fucking way. I don't know, man. That's just, that's, it's insane to me that I want to see the timestamp. Yeah. Oh, so if you go to the actual oh, Instagram, yeah, if you go to the Instagram post that this came from, it was the day after. It, was, yeah. it wasn't just posted the day after, was it? Because maybe he gave it to him and then posted it afterwards. Who's that with him? Who said yep? <laughs> I don't know, man, because this was, it was tagged location in New York from, uh, uh, I forgot what event it was, but it was in New York Fashion Week while okay. they were out there doing all yeah. that. So I understand where you're coming from, but I just, regardless, man, like it's that's still, just, it's I feel still like somebody like, was pointing yeah. at him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom in on the smile. He's I want to like, see the smile. Zoom in yeah. on the smile. <laughs> Virgil, blink twice. <laughs> <laughs> But Notice what is the like, hands are in a symbol for help. <laughs> oh, that's us. Hey. <laughs> With um, DIY culture kind of going the way that it is, do you think that this is something that's going to continue to be a trend within sneaker culture moving forward? Like, 
I hope so. I never would have thought that we would get something like this directly from Nike. Right. You know? Right. And, and with them embracing this so much, do you think that they're, obviously they have their finger on the pulse, they're tapped in, they know yeah. what people like yourself and what Virgil are doing. Right. Do you think it's going to continue to go in that way of like, this is more of the style that we will start seeing more because it's so unique and so creative? I'm hoping that, I mean, and if I think, I think if they're smart, what they'll do is definitely push still in that direction, but mm -hmm. it's almost just a new avenue, for, not necessarily new, but like... This is a new lane harder. that they yeah, haven't like, really tapped you into. You know, you got your, your athletes and, and mm -hmm. you have your, you know, celebrity pairs and, and industry insiders and, and all right. these cats that design. But, you know, like we said earlier, like we've, as a sneaker community, we've, we've made our voice heard. Right. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's, uh, it's the start of a bigger wave. I think so, man. The only way that this is okay for me is that we bring. I have to go back to it one more time. Uh -huh. I think the only way that that's maybe not like a breach of contract is it's an off-white collaboration. Now he happens to be the mm. owner of Off-White, mm -hmm. but if the liability doesn't go towards like him personally, yeah, right. And it's really just about Off-White. Like Off-White, I'm sure has contractually can't touch anything with Adidas or any other brand for that's at least, a good point. You know, yeah. one year from the release of you know what I'm saying. Like there's yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm something in there for like that but i don't know if him personally that's not even Virgil think about that yeah i didn't even think it's about an off-white collaboration so right. maybe that, he skated that's a that. loophole he yeah, that's, that's, that's that gray area right there okay. i don't know i didn't think about it that way but you're absolutely right that because it is it's not a virgil Abloh collaboration it's an off-white nike collab so it's possible that that's the uh, all right still fucked up though. it is still fucked up i still though. think like, somebody's pointing a gun at him <laughs> 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 but him and Kanye's boys, like yeah. they, they might have had something planned out. Um, we got so we only got 15 minutes left, so I'm gonna run through these next topics that I have. Uh, the next one is the Nike, uh, or excuse me, Nike celebrating Latino Heritage Month. I know we got some Latinos in the crowd tonight. Go ahead, make your presence known. <laughs> yeah, hey, those Saint or Edgar Air Force Ones. Oh, are so you man. already on it? Those yeah, are crazy. Yeah, like, I mean, because he's he's another artist that he has a lot of mass in his paintings and illustrations. Uh, so you got a mask on the back. On the back yeah. Of the, yeah, on the yeah. joint. So they did, uh, <laughs> they did mask four on mask shoes. on mask. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nike collaborated with four Latino artists to release the first pack. Um, they collaborated with Palm from Sao Paulo, Brazil for uh, the Jordan 1. The Air Max 1 was Wasafu. I apologize if I'm butchering these names from Santiago, Chile. The Cortez was Inti from Valparaiso. You you know I speak English. Uh, Valparaiso in Chile. Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> and then the Air Force One was center in Mexico City. Man, y'all gonna leave me alone. In Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> so the collection reflects uh, the commitment and passion of members in Nike Latino Nike's Latino friends and family employee network. Uh, and actually, so the thing that I didn't know and I did a little bit of research earlier was each one of these symbolizes different things. So uh, the Air Max One is dubbed the Nomad, which, which focuses on migration. Uh, mm -hmm. The Cortez is the one heart for different cultures of the Americas united as one. The Air Force One Master Jaguar invites us to destroy our mask and egos and be re reborn into courage. Uh, and then I guess the last one I didn't get around to, so I, I apologize on that. <laughs> But I think that this is something that's really incredible. And it, it's, it's back to the storytelling. I do think that they could have done a better story because I did have to dig for, you know, these resources and information. Uh, but I think that Nike is doing something that we haven't seen and we've actually discussed lately of storytelling and bringing some type of like mm -hmm. heritage or something into it that makes you appreciate these more instead of just giving us the same Jordans that we got three years ago. Right, right, Or the right. same, you know, it's the, it's the, what's the 15th, or excuse me, not 15th, the 30th anniversary of the Cortez, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now they're, you're dropping Cortezes and they're doing a the 25th anniversary of the Air Max 97, or not 25th. God damn it, man, my numbers <laughs> are all, the 20th <laughs> anniversary. Chopper 16 with yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Math is not my strong suit. Y'all know what year it is, <laughs> shit. Uh, but no, but they're just doing all this stuff where they're, they're celebrating anniversaries, but they're not really telling stories. And I think with something like this, they really went into it where we're going to collaborate with these artists that have this heritage, this background, 
and really tell kind of stories with these silhouettes. And I yeah. think that was like... Yeah, man, without these stories, I don't think I'm interested in any single Any of the these. shoes, any right. Ones, any single yeah. one. And I'm obsessed with red Air Max ones like that. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. even with the, like, without the story, I'm like, why'd you put lines on my shit like this? <laughs> right. I, I really I don't right. Once you know. But I yeah. love them, especially it has a mini swoosh on it. And I oh, suck yeah. for a mini swoosh. I, so I really like I gotta it. have those. As a... <laughs> I want to see that soul looks crazy. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. like yeah. rainbow almost. Yeah, it, it reminds like me of the B Trues that I got. Mm -hmm. The, the B True uh, Vapor Max. Yeah. I situation. really dig it because I have a strong Latino heritage. And by <laughs> strong Latino heritage, I mean I vacationed in Puerto Rico once and it was dope. So I really dig it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm like it was fucking lit. so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like the details of like the uh, the eyelets. Yes. Here, like yeah, there are a lot yeah, of yeah. details Shit's here I like that it, I like a lot. Yeah, Zach, get in there. Damn. <laughs> get in there. Get in there. <laughs> Did you call him Zach? Jack. I think he said Zach. It said yeah, Jack. Can we run that back? <laughs> Zach. <laughs> Zach. <laughs> Zach Scholes. Um. Do you think that it was good storytelling on Nike's part? Like I said, I did have to dig for it. Mm. And I wish we would have gotten some sort of visual to correspond mm -hmm. with these images mm -hmm. to really tell the story of the artist and yeah. what their inspiration was. Um, Nike holler at us. I mean, this straight weekend? up. When do they come out? Yeah, they, they do drop. Um, I mean, we might be speaking too soon, but you'd hope that there was a little event with each one of these artists. Well, they're dropping yeah. one per week for the next three weeks. Okay. Okay. So there's still time. So there is time. To happen. But that's the yeah. thing, though. We've talked, and then we've spoken on this before. Like, you can't just drop the story at the time of release. Like, there needs to be some sort you of build, build up. Yeah. You I know? mean, how like, long have we been seeing the off white collab? Exactly. Months. Long time. Right. Straight up. It's yeah. been popping up here and there. We didn't really get a full story until, I didn't anyway, until and that so panel discussion. Yeah, until the panel. You know, mm -hmm. the day of. Right. Uh, and I think that Nike, you know, if you would holler at your boys here at Sneaker Inc., we could really. It's le this is the level episode. We can step your game from here to <laughs> put you with on the storytelling. That. With the storytelling, we put you on. Not we're just we're skipping levels. We're going top shelf. Y'all know what I'm referencing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I saw Mayor. Mayor got his pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've nice. seen a lot of people oh, that are That almost looks like out. his signature on the back. It does look like his signature <laughs> that he puts in the photos. Yeah. Oh, shit, huh? Yeah, on those uh, Air Max ones. Shout out to Mayor. Shout out to Mayor, man. He's an OG in the game. And last but not least, I know you're excited about it because we've had many conversations offline. The newly announced LeBron 15. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is Danny's. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm really excited about it. I'll let you take him. this one. Yeah. It's, been a, it's been many years since I've been excited about uh, LeBron. Yeah. What was Dude. the last time? Uh, the nine. For so me, like, I was going to say LeBron nine. 11 is that 11? 2011? Really? I love the 11s, yeah. man. They translate to mass so wild. I got pairs oh, sitting away. Oh, that makes sense yeah. then, yeah. yeah. Well, well, and did I, you I like, grew up in D.C., so we have phone positive phones, community. Yep. And to me, okay. it was just. Oh, that technical. I like the angles over the curves. So, totally. Yeah, because that shit was. The King's Crown was dope, but I feel like that was one of the only ones that. I was really oh, like I went I went hard on like that's hard. how it was with the nines man I had the fucking chinas the oh, hornets yeah. I had the, the cannons like, the cannons the, chinas, the dunk I made, a, I made a custom joker from Batman Ooh, pair. Nice. it looked shit. nuts That'd be did cool you get it with the foam positive that. option on the side the, that like well, that was carbon the, fiber wing yeah, no, didn't they, the I'm talking no, about the nines. No, the nines, nines had the nines. carbon fiber on the carbon side. Carbon fiber, like no, wing. No, but wasn't, didn't they do an ID where they, you, could put the, you could put like that foam posit material into that little like triangular Not joint? Not for mine. You're doing the, the exact motion of yeah. what was you, on the you, side you, of yeah. it too. I'm, like, you know, but maybe I, I I'm remember. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. But I think they like had like a little period where you could put okay. like a, a different material If they did, I preferred the carbon fiber. Oh, yeah. Carbon fiber was clean on it. That dark black weave against that purple looked dope. Sure, man. I had two pairs of the Christmas joint, like I fucking yeah, love the LeBron sick. 9. And the 8 were good too, I had the eight, ham. the 8 lows, the sprites and the solar reds, like I oh. really fuck, yeah, I wanted the South Beaches. Yeah, when I was like, fuck yes, right. LeBron is. So they're bringing right back, like they're, I feel like with this one, they're really bringing back Nike basketball and giving the LeBron signature line like a lot of love. Yeah. Cause it has like, within the last few years, and we've seen it with the decline of like all-star releases and Christmas releases, like, Nike basketball hasn't really been getting the love that it once was. It's true. Uh, Man, oh, is this the one? Yeah, for but that's, that's like, the one for him. But that's, see, that's like the market too. Like people just haven't been into buying big, bulky, big bulky basketball, basketball shoes. shoes. Right. But Absolutely. this is really blending that line. Of course, this is extremely technical. It is, when you look and at they, like that. they but the even incorporated a new material, a new flying material, which they're calling battle knit, 
which is supposed to be uh, more durable and more secure for you know game play. Yeah, and, and I've seen like trash that. talking about that, and fuck that. Battle Net sounds. It sounds, sounds hard, right? yeah, that sounds <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Give me some. Can we, yeah. um, can we look that's at like some you of wear the under luxury the options as well? <laughs> so this is the first colorway that's actually going to release. It's your standard, you know, basketball shoe. It's got the the regular lacing system and I all that. Them. Black, red, and uh, black, red, and red, or black, white, and red. Is that your colorway? Black, red, and white is black, a, red, and white. Is a Achilles heel. Yeah. Um, but they have a couple options. So this one, that shit's mm-hmm. hard. This is my favorite. We're looking at the white floral pair, which has been dubbed the King's Crown, I believe. With the zipper. I like and it's got the shit. zipper down the front. <laughs> Mm. Like I this like is very yeah. shit. lifestyle. Like yeah. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's got that like a Gucci feel, you know, with they yeah. they've been doing with the flowers and the roses yeah, on the side and the snakes and the embroidery. I don't and know all why that. I never noticed this. The, they painted the airbags. I right. was just about to say that. I'm yeah, like, they yo, painted the airbags. oh, you're absolutely right. Maybe this one's not. No, no, no I think it's no, no. legit. You we think just it hadn't is? noticed yeah. it. We yeah. just hadn't noticed it yet. Yeah, which they do we've time. seen them do that on a few like what was it the Toronto airbags? Yeah, motherfucker just got this. Yeah, good, that was that's total karma. Uh, he for ju- what? He for getting those pair and not having me have them. Um, so yeah, those are those are ill. Those white airbags. That's one of the best executions. And we used the, what was it the ghost colorway as well? The one to the right of it. My God, dude, these are fucking beautiful. Maverick, I think, posted these for the first time on his Instagram. Dope. Yeah, and KD better come back hard with the better. And that's the pair. thing too; they're gonna have yeah. to do something because KD has, has been running back. the floral game for a Big minute time. with his like yeah. uh, his florals, and then he's also got the the pearls, um, the um, pearls yeah, that he pearls, does, yeah. like all that. And I think that this coming holiday season, the LeBron fifteen, well, the PG one, mm-hmm. the Kyrie three, is he on right now? The Kyrie, yeah, three, yeah, yeah. Three, Kyrie yeah. three, yeah. and then KD's like. This, I feel like this is going to, like, they're finally, if I'm not mistaken, when they're bringing this back in the way they're doing the silhouettes now, I feel like we'll finally get, like, a, a legit uh, Christmas release, the mm. All-Star releases again. Mm-hmm. Like, we'll really be able to kind of get the Nike basketball that was, like, it was coveted for fucking years, man. Yeah, I remember the Galaxy like, Phone Pods. Galaxy Phones. Like, legendary. That's yeah. what really, sp- I had those fucking, the orange Galaxy LeBrons, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, the flight suits. The God, yeah, those, those, were, those were tough. Those were yeah, there were so many good nines. From that pack. Yep. With the Velcro, yep. yeah, those yep. went ham. So uh, they, they all have this battle knit? So every one That's of them has battle knit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, if this is yeah. battle knit uh, underneath the embroidery, uh-huh. it almost has a Kuji vibe to it. Do you see what I'm a saying? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. The texture. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, a, yeah. like the sweater, uh-huh. yeah. the weird like, knit. Yeah. It's like a loose knit scales almost. Yeah, too. yeah it almost yeah. looks like it's like fat leaking through a fish net, basically. <laughs> what <laughs> the? Go back. He oh, loves go, the shoe, and that's back, how you're going go to back, you know, go, Jack, you know, go back to the great. You know what? You see some good like, fat poking through look, a look, fish net. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you see the little cellulite dots Jack, that's kind of poking through the skin. Yeah, that one. No she's. See, look, it's squeezing through. Wow. Well, fish net Lord pattern. You know what? We're going to end it on that note. Like, I, I, I don't think there's any other way. <laughs> it's my honor. Not God. unless you got a pair of fish nets on that someone going to walk out. Oh, in. my goodness gracious. For example. For somebody who loves this shoe that much, that is the description that you give it. Great mm. metaphor. Wow. I'm, I'm, I got to hold them in hand, though. I'm yeah. flabbergasted. The fish nets? I don't even know yeah. what else to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fish nets? <laughs> Oh, my God. To wrap this up, for our viewers and for our listeners, please let them know where they can find you, um, your social media handles, your website, where they can purchase masks from you, all of that. Sure. Uh, Pretty easy to find. Instagram and Twitter. It's Freehand Profit. That's F-R-E-E-H-A-N-D-P-R-O-F-I-T. Same for the website, freehandprofit.com. From there, you'll find links to the blog, the shop, shopfreehand.com. Got custom lace locks, order masks. T-shirts, bring all money. Of that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my man's over here trying to secure the bag. So come correct. How much time do we have? No time. We got like two seconds. One, One second. Minute. One minute. One minute. When did you start making lace locks? Oh, 2014, I think. Okay, I'm super interested in lace. Yeah. Yes. You bring you have some very unique situation. There. I might, I might have yeah, a keychain and a pair too. of scarab locks in my uh, toolkit. Keychain. I call this. Oh. I brought it up. Yeah, lace lock. You got the lace lock. I got, I got okay. you on those. They <laughs> infrared and they glow in the dark. You ain't oh losing. Oh my god. Because <laughs> you got the joints oh, that flip. The, it says profit on both sides, right? Or is uh, those actually I don't have. The metal ones we all sold out of. We did those in oh, okay. uh, like a rose gold copper and yeah, a gun metal. Yeah, those were hard. 
People slept on them for a while, so there's a few pairs in my collection more well, than I plan. No, yeah, let I'm them sleep. Yeah, I got shit. pairs of lace up. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for stopping in and talking right. to us, man. This has been an absolute pleasure. Appreciate uh, y'all for everybody me. that is listening on Dash Radio. Thank you for tuning in. Also, make sure to check out the visual counterpart at sneakering.com or on youtube.com forward slash sneaker inc whichever tickles your fancy for john colombo for dano i am jesus christ and as always we will see you next week a A piece of hell hell. (laughs) 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 hell yeah <laughs> and a boop 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 and a boop 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 <laughs> <laughs>